Yeah. Meanwhile, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy confirming that the House will move forward with legislation on TikTok. He tweeted this, quote, it's very concerning that the CEO of TikTok can't be honest and admit what we already know to be true. China has access to TikTok user data. Meanwhile, Virginia Senator Mark Warner claims that the Biden administration backs his bill, which would give the Commerce Department power to either ban TikTok or force a sale. I think the White House is very in favor of this bill. One of the things that may lead to a ban is the Chinese Communist Party has said they felt like the algorithm, the source code that re resides in Beijing is so important that they'd rather see a ban than give that source code up to be placed in a third country, which again, I think speaks volumes about the potential threat that uh, this application poses. I'm not so sure that the White House is fully behind this bill. Joining me now to talk more about it is Gatestone Institute senior fellow and author of The Coming Collapse of China and the Great U.S.-China Tech War. Gordon Chang is here. Gordon, great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. The Warner Thune bill doesn't mention TikTok. It mentions social media, and that's the one that he's saying that the White House is behind. It almost feels to me that the White House wants to put something out there, but they don't really have to get aggressive on TikTok because it doesn't even name TikTok in the bill. What do you think? Yes, and, and we don't even need a bill to ban TikTok. The president can do that with his authority yeah. under the International Emergency Economic Powers Act. And I think we should do more than just ban TikTok. We should expropriate it so that we do get the algorithm. Because really at this point, Maria, that algorithm has been used to foment violence on American streets. It glorifies drug use, all sorts of other projects to weaken the United States. And so therefore, I think that we need to go beyond the banning. Yeah, it's interesting because the Chinese media, it's not even media, it's the state media, propaganda, they follow the, the conversations in the United States. They're following our political debates and jumping on board and driving uh, their own narrative. China is still growing its global influence, though, Gordon. Honduras is now establishing diplomatic relations with Beijing after formally cutting ties with Taiwan. I spoke with the former Secretary of State yesterday, Mike Pompeo, on Sunday Morning Futures about Vice President Kamala Harris's trip to Africa this week. She's focusing on countering the China threat, she says. What can she really do? Watch this. There's no doubt uh, Xi Jinping is trying to control the whole world, and that includes nations in Africa, uh, doing it two ways. One, uh, buying up the rare earth minerals that this administration desperately wants for its uh, climate change program, and second, uh, buying up political leaders, uh, bribing uh, folks at every level inside of those governments in an attempt, again, to surround the United States of America, to make life difficult for our kids and grandkids here at home. It is part of a strategic effort on behalf of Xi Jinping to control the economic levers of the world. Gordon, what's your reaction? I mean, look, that's what the CCP is doing. They have bought up about 7 percent of the land throughout African nations. Uh, and they want those rare earth mil uh, minerals as well. There's one simple thing that we can do. China has bribed the leaders of all these countries. They've bribed them in dollars. Every dollar transaction clears through New York. We can disclose the payments that China has made to African leaders. By the way, that's what happened in the Solomon Islands, where the disclosure of payments to legislators from China and that's been effective, although, of course, we need to do a lot more in the Solomons. But the point is, we have the tools to be able to expose that corruption and therefore make advances of our own so that our companies can deal on a level playing field. Yeah, I just don't know if the administration is going to be able to wind any of this back. I mean, the CCP has its program in place. Now they're, he's partnering with Russian President Putin. Putin is claiming that Russia and China are not creating a military alliance. Putin says, quote, we have cooperation in the sphere of military technical interaction. We're not hiding this. Everything is transparent. There's nothing secret, Gordon. How do you assess this partnership between Russia and China? Well, Putin is technically correct where there's not a military alliance. In other words, an obligation to defend. Because China is so arrogant, it would not um, enter into an alliance with any other country except for North Korea. 
But the point is, China is all in supporting the Ukraine war, and that's also with lethal assistance. And the Biden administration says the provision of lethal assistance is a red line, but it refuses to acknowledge that China has ignored Biden warnings and has been providing that lethal assistance from pretty much the beginning of this war. So, you know, Maria, this is a hollow warning, and hollow warnings always lead to trouble. Well, maybe, but, you know, this administration isn't doing anything about any of this. I mean, they sent Kamala Harris to Africa under the guise of, oh, we want to try to lure uh, the African leadership and, 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 and stop China. But the truth is, is the, the tone is set at the top. Corporate America is all in and in terms of investing in China because that's the law. China's commerce minister uh, is going to be meeting with the CEO of Apple, Tim Cook. They're meeting today in Beijing. This ahead of the China Development Forum this weekend, big CEO conference, Cook says Apple and China have grown together and have, quote, a symbiotic kind of relationship, Gordon. Uh, we know that Alibaba founder Jack Ma has returned to China now after more than a year traveling overseas. That was because of a government crackdown on the Chinese tech sector and pretty much the CCP taking away some of his wealth by taking away some of his ownership of Alibaba. So what are your thoughts on the CCP at this point and the fact that corporate America is just looking at the dollar signs because the government has to set the tone and Joe Biden has not uh, walled off any opportunities for corporate America in China? Yes, uh, Biden can use his authority under the International Emergency Economic Powers Act of 1977 to do all sorts of things, including getting American companies off Chinese soil. But, you know, right now, China is desperately concerned because they're worried that the international business community has started to shun China. And that's why we see this charm offensive, which is the reason why they've enticed Jack Ma back into China. But let's remember that while they enticed Jack Ma, they are now holding Bao Fallon for more than a month. He was the, of Renaissance, the big tech financier, and he's been in detention. So China is not really changing its views about foreign business. It's just engaged in, in an attempt to bring them back in. Yeah, I'm wondering what this means for American businesses there operating on the ground. Yeah, Should I, they be worried? With increasing tension between the United States and China, China causing it, um, I think companies there are really foolish because it, one day they're going to wake up and they are going to find themselves expropriated, which is what China did in 1950, or wow. we're going to find that they will not be able to deliver products to consumers because their ports are going to be closed. This mm. is really short-sighted, and this is where the president needs to use those powers that he has. Yeah, interesting. Gordon, it's great to talk with you as always. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Maria.